Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross from PTCG Radio, and we are back with the final from the Professor Cup Rules Tournament. Now, the feedback I've had from this so far has been very good, and... There are a lot of people requesting these kind of games, so I've already given you all five of my Swiss rounds. Uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched them already, I went 3-2 and didn't make top four. I've already shown you the top four game between the brothers Reese and Luke Williams, and for the third time in this little series of videos, we see Luke Williams in the final. He is again on the right with his Avalug healing deck, the one that just plays a 2-2 Avalug line along with a bunch of healing cards like Super Potion and Pokemon Center Lady and Hard Charm, which doesn't heal, but it blocks damage and that's good enough for me. And on the left we see Joe Wilkes, and I believe he's playing a kind of a hybrid deck. I think he's got some Avalug in there, but he's got some other stuff in there as well. So it's not just mono analog like Luke's deck. Although, as we watch a video, we shall be reminded. Now, because this is the final, this is a best of three, not a single game. Like the top four was rather than twist rounds. And the winner of this is going to take it all home. So we see Luke starts with a Bergmite. Again, he's not mulliganing like he should, only playing two basics. And I know it's a 30 card deck, but that's basically the equivalent of playing four basics in a 60 card deck. You'd expect to mulligan a little bit. And Joe has started with two Bergmites, and he's got an energy on one. First turn of the game, however, cannot do anything. Or at least can't attack. So Luke plays the red card and follows it up with a Shauna to see what we've seen a lot this tournament, which is the red card Shauna combo. Putting Luke down to five cards, and it also puts Joe down to four cards, but then, of course, before Joe does anything, he's going to be drawing a card for his next turn. So he's essentially putting them both down to five cards, like an end to five. He's also going to play a roller skate, so there is Luke, and he's going to hit a Tails. That looks like a three, I believe. And a big shout out to Glenn here, the lovely chap, who appears to have, cut the, I believe, shut the curtains this game, giving us a slightly clearer view of the playing field. The guy on the left has always been visible, but the guy on the right has been a little bit of glare from time to time. So Luke used Bergmite's attack there to discard an e a card from the top of Joe's deck, and then, I think it was a professor's letter, and then Joe is using a Great Ball here. Great Ball is not a great card at all, but in this format, as I said in my video, we're really struggling for Pokemon Search. There's Ultra Ball, but in 30 card decks playing two copies of each card, the discard is not usually very kind to you. And there's Evo Soda, which doesn't help you get basics. So he's played a Great Ball there. And he's playing another Great Ball here. Clearly here he's looking for the Avalug, hopefully got the DCE as well, so that he can get Avalug's first attack off. And you see he does hit an Avalug there. So he's clearly actually got what he wanted, which is very nice of his deck to let him have that. So he's if he's got DCE here, he's going to be going for the Frost Barrier, the attack that does 40 damage and blocks 20 damage from your opponent's attack the following turn. And he has got the DCE, and this is really starting to put Luke on a clock here. The question is, can Luke get the Avalug? Can he heal? Can he hit the Hard Charm, etc.? And he does. He hits the Evo Soda, and that's going to allow him to get the Avalug out. Now, in a straight Avalug on Avalug fight, essentially, as with a lot of pure mirror, it comes down to, and a DC there as well, it comes down really to who gets the first attack, which in this case was Joe. They both got the turn to Frost Barrier. The difference is Joe went first, so he got the first Frost Barrier off. But, of course, the big key here is the healing. Now, I know, I believe Joe plays some healing, and a rule came in there that both active Pokemon are now confused. Go coin flips! Um, and, but with Joe's going to be playing, I believe, some healing here. But Luke's playing a lot of healing, and that's really what it's going to come down to. If one person can heal more than the other, then it doesn't really matter that Joe went first. That person who gets the most healing is going to win, regardless of whether that was Joe who went first or Luke who went second. So he's going to play a Lassonde to catch the Bergmite up, and that makes perfect sense. What he's essentially doing here is trying to get the easy early KO on the Bergmite, because he's going to have to take down that Avalok. That's, that's a given. 
But if he can hit the Bergmite for 40 this turn, and then hit the Bergmite for 40 next turn, getting two Frost Barriers off, that's going to get him an easy KO on the Bergmite, putting him a prize up, and then they can go into the Avalug fight with all the healing. The difference, of course, being that not only is Luke going to be one prize up, but also Luke is going to have potentially a second Avalug coming along later, whereas when Joe's Avalug goes down, he's going to be screwed. So he attaches a DCE there onto the Bergmite, so he's not getting his first attack off. He gets a hard charm onto the Avalug, and he's using that DCE to retreat the Bergmite. Slightly risky play, because that means all his DCEs are now gone. But of course, what's his alternative? The alternative is to let that Bergmite die. Here he's only got one DCE, but he's potentially got two Avalug. Whereas before he'd have two DCE and only one Avalug, and that's a worse position to be in. So he gets back up, he gets a KO, as he gets the attack, sorry. But we see Pokemon Center Lady. There's no confusion, there's no damage. And now, it's as if Luke is getting the first attack off. Although somewhat humorously, because he's got a hard charm attached to him, and he's just going to get the power pad to get the Pokemon Center Lady and Lysandra, not Lysander, back in his deck. But because um, Joe's got the hard charm attached, that Avalug is actually blocking 40 damage. Meaning that Luke's Frost Barrier will actually do nothing. It will reduce 20 damage from uh, Joe's attack next turn, but it's not actually doing anything. Now, the question is, is he going to blink here and do the... Oh, he is going to blink and do the 70 damage. That's potentially a silly, silly move. Because if Luke goes and gets himself some healing here, then... Oh, no, actually, maybe it's not such a silly move. Because he's not blocking the 20 damage here, but he is basically putting Luke on a little bit of a clock. Now, there was a, no, another rule there. Both of the actives are now burned, although they've both gotten out of the confusion pretty quickly. Joe got out of the confusion when Luke Lissandra had his bench Bergmite, and Luke got out of the confusion when he played Pokemon Center Lady. So, you can see what's going on here. Essentially, there is going to be a KO on that Avalug next turn. Because even if he does the attack for 40, Joe will do 70 back, and that will be enough to KO the Avalug. So actually, although it was a potentially risky play if Luke got a bunch of healing off and then started hitting Joe's Avalug, that actually makes perfect sense. But you see here, there's going to be um, a KO. Oh, and Joe actually hits his own Pokemon Center Lady there. And Luke is going to give up. There's nothing he can do here. Essentially, Joe got the first turn off. They both got a little bit of healing. And you can see one of the big downsides of Luke's deck here. He's tanking with Avalug. But Joe, although I didn't like the play at first, it actually then makes perfect sense. Joe basically got his Avalug out doing 70. And basically saying, if you can't heal, I'm going to knock you out first. And then Luke basically discovers he hasn't got his second Bergmite out. He doesn't have another Pokemon with which to attack. So actually, there's nothing he can really do there other than die. Joe gets the win... And we're into game two with Joe being one game up. But it is a best of three. And although it's 50 minutes or an hour, one of the two. I mean, you can see from the length of the video, it's not going to 50 minutes. Because you've, well, hopefully now you've seen five Swiss rounds and a top four in this particular format. And games at the most last about 15 minutes here. We're not going to be running to time. I believe in the round where they made it best of three, I believe there actually was one game that did go to time, strangely. But I believe there was a rule enacted during the tournament that there will be no ties. Personally, I'm not a fan of ties anyway. At a recent tournament, admittedly I was already out of cut and playing a senior, but let's ignore that. I won game one, scooped game two, went straight to game three, going first, because I didn't want any ties. Whether I'd have done that with a chance of cuts, however, I'm not entirely convinced I actually would have gone that way. So Luke lost the previous game. He's going to get to go first here. And again, he's not really mulliganing again, again like we'd expect him to. But I, I think we can safely tell. I don't know why he's even put it face down. We know Luke's starting Bergmite. This is the third game we've had of Luke on stream. We know he's starting Bergmite. So we know he only plays a 2-2 Avalug list. And here's where we see Joe's deck 
maybe potentially falling down against Luke's here. He started Lunatone. Now, Lunatone was in my deck, so there's five games where you can see me playing Lunatone. But the difference is, here, Joe Reedy... You can see why he's playing... He's basically playing a mixture of Soul Rock, Lunatone, and Avaluk. So, he can get 40 damage off with Soul Rock, and there's things like Bunnery, which are weak to fighting. But as with everything, you you lose a consistency here. Luke's there, he's got his Bergmite with his Hard Charm and his DCE. And Joe has got a Lunatone active. We can put an energy on the Lunatone and draw two cards, but then he's another turn away from getting his Avalug out. Or he can sacrifice the Lunatone for, to, in order to you know get his uh, Avalug all powered up. But then he's starting the game a prize down. Now he does get an Avalug from that Great Ball, although it's his first turn of the game, so he's not going to be able to evolve it. Unlike my opponent in one of the previous Professor Cup videos, who did evolve on turn one. Uh, although neither of us noticed it, so I don't know if we can really say anything. Thank you to the people who pointed out in the comments, though. So Joe here, I mean, what does he do? Does he attach to Lunatone, draw two cards, and then he can retreat it in future turns, which he does. But then it's going to be at least two more turns till he gets attacking with Avalug. And now Luke's going to want to play a red card if he's got it here, because he knows that Joe's got an Avalug in hand, so he's got a red card. Now would be a lovely time to play it. Uh, but Luke gets the Avalug. It doesn't look like he's got the water energy, though, so he's not actually going to be able to get the KO, which is a huge break for Joe here. And there's a little rule coming in here that everybody's taking the top card of their deck, and they are going to be putting it as an extra prize. So it turns into a four prize game. By the way, we did miss a um, rule at 7 minutes 20 that all flips are going to come up as tails. But it wasn't really an issue at that stage. I did forget that one. I've got it on my notes here. It wasn't really an issue. So he is going to retreat the Soul Rock in order to put the Avalug up active. Which I don't agree with. Um... And he puts an energy on. Now he's not going to be able to put that energy on, which I believe Luke is calling him on. And I'm watching this game, so hopefully, I believe I'm talking kind of over the camera here, you can't hear it. Um, but he's already attached this turn. It's his second turn of the game, he attached to Salt Lunatone first turn. He tried to double attach to um, Avalug there. And that's one of the benefits of having somebody standing there filming your games. If it came down to it, we could have watched the footage back. And here is a huge downside of Joe starting with that Lunatone. Despite Luke having missed an energy on his previous turn, he still gets the first attack. Now there is a potential benefit here for Joe. He's got that Soul Rock down. Now that's an easy 40 damage. Um, and there's a startling megaphone there to get rid of Luke's hard charm. Although truth be told, if Luke's got a hard charm and done Avalug's Frost Barrier attack, then it's actually going to do nothing anyway. But it is a potential there. So you see there, it does look like Luke's actually got a second hard jump to attach there. And I suppose this really comes down to the age-old issue of consistency. So Joe gets the second energy on there. Oh, the fourth energy, sorry, the second water energy. And he plays a Shauna. Is he going to go for that second attack again? Now, the thing about the second attack is it doesn't block the 20, and if Luke can get some healing, then essentially all you're doing is stopping the attack for 20. What you really need here is um, a situation, shall we say, where you want to be basically forcing your opponent into doing a big attack so that they don't block the 20, so that you can then hit. If you both keep using Avalog's attack for 40 with a hard charm attached to each Avalog, the attack's never going to do anything. If one person blinks first and uses the bigger attack, then that's going to, you know, do a lot more damage. But if your opponent heals and then carries on the 40 attack, you're not blocking a 20 damage as they have been. And I've been saying all this stuff so much, I do hope it's making sense and I haven't just turned into gibberish. Now there is another rule coming in here that all special energy is to be discarded. So both players lose their DCE. 
And now it's a really good thing Joe did put that second water energy on. Because whereas Luke is going to need to hit a DCE to attack next turn, Joe is only going to need to attach a single water energy, and he's going to be able to get a frost barrier off with Avalug. But he hasn't got any energy to attach this turn, so unfortunately he's got to pass, which is very unfortunate. And then the question becomes, does Luke have another DCE in order to be continuing to attack with Avalug? And it doesn't look like he does. So now we ask a similar question. Does Joe have an energy? And he does have an energy because he hits that professor's letter. So he can search for energy. And that's really going to help him. He can search for those two water energy. And... This guarantees he's going to be able to get the attack off this turn. And remember that because Luke didn't attack the previous turn with Frost Barrier, he's not blocking all 40 damage, just 20 with a hard charm. So Luke again looks to be on the back foot here. His deck is, in theory, more consistent than Joe's, more straightforward. But Joe is doing better in this particular game. He's got the Avalug, he's got the Energy. Now Luke does hit a water energy there, but only a water energy, so there will be no frost barrier from him this turn. And Luke appears to be asking him about any tools he might have active. That seems to signify he's got a startling megaphone in his hand, and he might be looking to play that at some point in the near future. There's a lot of thinking going on from Luke here, basically deciding what he's going to do. I mean, if he has got a Startling Megaphone, the question is basically, do you play it here and risk running out of Startling Megaphones, or do you wait until you can get rid of two tools, and as well as getting rid of two tools, actually, you know, maximise the use of your Startling Megaphones? Plus, of course, if he uses a Startling Megaphone this turn, and Joe just puts down another Hard Charm next turn... As we've already discussed, Luke isn't attacking this turn. So if Joe just flicks down a second startling megaphone, it's just going to be a huge waste. So interestingly here, Luke drops a super potion. Now that basically negates the energy attachment he put down this turn. But what it does do is heal the, uh, the damage from his Avalug. So his Avalug's nice and e easy there. Um... In terms of having, um, in, you know, in, in terms of not having much damage on there, but it's going to be a little while before we can attack again. So, and you see another super potion there, knocking all of his energy off. And Joe has again gone towards that attack. Now you'll notice that unlike the previous games we've seen with the previous Avalog players, the previous Avalog players all were very much. That you didn't really see that second attack coming out. They went for the general Avalug theory of, let's just use Frost Barrier. 40 damage, blocking 20 is pretty good. That'll do. And we can, you know, build the damage up slowly but surely whilst tanking with Avalug. Joe's going the more aggressive route. And what that allows him to do is basically put pressure on his opponent, force the use of those healing cards slightly earlier... And, you know, basically put your opponent on a clock. If Luke can't respond to the 70 or 90 damage a turn, then that means that Joe is going to be going ahead in prizes. So Luke drops down a red card there, and he's got a Bergmite of an energy on the bench, and it's almost as if he's given up on that active Avalok. You can kind of see where he's going with this one, because the active Avalug is always going to be on the back foot. He needs to be healing. He's got no energy on him. By the time he gets the energy on there with all the healing and such, there is a very good chance that he's never actually going to be able to do anything here, because he attaches an energy, and then Joe hits him, and by the time he gets actually enough energy to start doing some attacks, the Avalug's going to die. So Luke's basically gone to the theory of, let's just let the Avalug die, and build up another one on the bench. And the interesting rule that came out there was, discard your hand, and draw one card. Now that's really interesting here. Because Joe is going to starting to be run short of energy quite soon. Because he'd had to discard a couple of energy there in his hand. Now, partly first his letter. 
and Luke is going to buy some time here. Now, if we think about how this game could pan out at this stage, if Luke is able to get an Avalog with enough energy on and kill Joe's active Avalog, then what that's basically going to do is kill all of those four water energies on Joe's Avalog. Now, there's other energy in the discard pile, and what that basically means is that Joe could be running out of energy here. And if Joe runs out of energy, that's going to put the game squarely into Luke's kind of wheelhouse, if you will. Now, the other issue here is decking out. We talked about Sycamore in the previous game with Luke and Reese Williams and how it's very, very aggressive in this particular format. Luke has just captured up that Bergmite. And we've already discussed how Joe is quite short of energy. There is a genuine chance here that Joe is actually going to run out of energy and then deck out. Joe does not appear to have many cards left in his deck. Now at this stage, I would be saying to Luke, basically, for the love of God, stop playing cards. You want an Avalog, you want an energy, you'll draw into them, you're buying yourself a bunch of turns. He's still playing roller skates and such, and looking at the decks, and I remember counting it at the time, if we look at those decks, Joe's going to deck out first. So I don't know why Luke is continually trying to play cards. What Luke really should be doing here, and that power pad is going to help, and I believe he's probably putting back a couple of Pokemon sent to ladies, maybe a Lysandra, not Lysander. What Luke really needs to do here is basically just let Joe deck out. Now, you notice this turned into a four-prize game. There's no way four prizes are going to be taken here. What's going to happen is that either Joe is going to deck out, or Luke is going to lose his two Avalogs. There's going to be no four prizes taken here. And we see a Pokemon Center Lady. And a pass. And here, hopefully Luke has finally seen it. Oh, and he plays an Evo Soda. Darn you, Luke. Because essentially, you see, Luke's <laughs> Joe actually has four Pokemon out. So in order for Luke to win the game the traditional way with Avalugs and such, he's going to have to take four prizes. And that's not going to happen given the amount of time left. Luckily, it turns into a non-issue and Joe is going to deck out. He didn't play his energy smartly enough and that led to him running out of um, resources. Now, he was slightly hard done by by the rule saying to discard all of your energy... But really what Joe did there was he played way too many cards. And there were really two factors in Joe's loss in that second game there. Number one, he wasn't smart of his energy attachments. He kept going for the second attack with Avalug. Now to be fair, we saw that working for Joe in game one. But the problem with that second attack with Avalug is it's very much an all or nothing. It didn't work. Luke was able to play a very well-timed and well... Um, executed Lysandra, or well targeted Lysandra, not Lysander, and essentially what that allowed him to do was just run Joe out of energy because there were too many on the Avalug. The other problem there was the consistency factor. Because Joe had his Soul Rock and his Lunatone and all of that good stuff, it gives him more options, uh, yes. But what it means is he has to kill an energy early on in order to retreat the Soul Rock. It gives Luke Lysandra targets. It means that Luke is going through his deck much more quickly, whereas Luke is just basically sitting there with an Avalug and healing. And as well as preserving cards in his deck, it actually makes Luke's deck a bit more consistent, because he doesn't need to draw that much. DCE, Water, Avalug, Bergmite. And hopefully you draw the Hard Charm, and hopefully you draw into the Super Potion, and the Pokemon Center, Lady, and Lysandra, blah, blah, blah. But essentially, four cards. Bergmite, Avalog, Water, DCE, and then you're off. Whereas with Joe's deck, if he draws into the wrong stuff at the wrong time, then that means he's running through a lot more cards. And deck out, strangely, and finally we actually see a mulligan from Luke. And one thing that really was an issue in this format, which isn't much of an issue in regular formats, is decking out. There were many games over the weekend, over the weekend, over the tournament, which we did see end in a deck out. Now, we haven't seen many on this particular stream, you know, on this particular series of videos I've been uploading, but it was an ever-present danger. People were actually decking out in this tournament, which is not something we saw all that much, or something we see all that much in the kind of regular games, in our regular kind of format games. 
So, we are now one game each, we are into the deciding third game, and Joe is going to be going first. And the reason Joe is going to be going first is because he lost game two. Now, this is slightly better. Again, he's not got the Bergmite, and as we've seen, Avalug is better than Soul Rock and Lunatone, that's just a fact at this stage. But he's got the Soul Rock, and he's got the Lunatone on the bench, so he's got 40 damage next turn. And because Luke's not going to have an Avalug, that is going to be 40 damage, or maybe 20 with a hard charm. So the Soul Rock is going to be able to put some nice early damage onto that Bergmite, which could be a nice advantage there. Oh, but he does get the hard charm, and that is absolutely key. And he hits a head with the roller skates. So he's got the energy, he's got the hard charm. This is a pretty good start from Luke. He could do with getting that second Bergmite down, which you've seen over Luke's game so far has not always been the easiest thing if you're only playing a 2-2 line as your only Pokemon. But the other thing, and I believe he might only be playing Evo Soda, so he's literally got to draw into that second Bergmite. But you'll see here... Oh, and there was a special rule coming in there. Both Pokemon are asleep and poisoned. Um... The difference, of course, being that Luke's going to be able to evolve into Avalog next turn, getting rid of that sleep and poison regardless. Um, and I believe that was just into Joe's turn. So actually, it will do ten, the, the poison will do 10 damage, but then he'll be able to hopefully evolve into Avalog, getting rid of both the poison and the sleep, leaving him just on 10 damage, and that's going to be very nice for him indeed. So we got the Soul Rock there, and I don't know if he's flipped for the sleep yet, but if he does need a head, this is very, very bad for him, because he's going to stay asleep and poisoned. Um, if Luke can get a Berg, uh, an Avalug, and as we've seen from his deck so far, he does not struggle for the turn to Avalug. If Luke can get the Avalug, then he's not going to be asleep and poisoned. The Soul Rock is going to be asleep, if not, uh, sorry, he's going to be poisoned, if not asleep as well. Oh, and it goes into Luke's turn, and he's got the Team Flare Grunt, which is fantastic. Oh, but he does miss the Avalug. Oh, no, sorry, that was in, I believe we were still in Luke's turn there, somehow. So we were still in Luke's turn, so we couldn't have had the Avalug. Um, fair enough. Hopefully he'll have the Avalug next turn. But he got the Team Flag Grunt to get the energy off him. And maybe Joe gets the energy here and maybe he does 20 damage, putting the Bergmite up to 40. Actually, a startling Megaphone energy here would just be lovely. Oh, he's got the energy. But then we're, we're going to be seeing what we've said a lot about the kind of interaction between these two. Oh, we got a Muscle Band there. So with a startling Megaphone, this would actually be the game. Because he'd be able to do 40 damage... Plus 20 for the Muscle Man. Now, that's only doing 40 at the moment. So, he's playing a Shauna. I can't remember if he plays Startling Megaphone. No, he does play Startling Megaphone. We've seen him play Startling Megaphone previously in this video. So, if Joe can draw into a Startling Megaphone here, that will be the game. He will be doing 60 damage with Soul Rock's attack. And that will kill the Bergmite. The question is, can he hit the Startling Megaphone off of those cards? Now he's either trolling him here or he doesn't have it. He's thinking about summoning. It's clearly it's the Ultra Ball. He doesn't have the startling megaphone, so that means he doesn't get the KO this turn. And interestingly, he's dropped another Soul Rock down. Now we all know that Avalog's second attack. Now I have said that it's not always best to use Avalog's second attack because you don't block the 20 damage because it takes too much energy, etc. But we know from previous games that Luke plays a pair of Lassons. So what that means is, and he needs the Avalog here or he loses. And there's the Pokemon Center Lady, getting rid of all the damage and the poison. Um, but if he can KO this Soul Rock here, then it doesn't really matter if Joe gets an Avalog up or not. Because... Luke can just Lassonde up the Lunatone, kill it with Avalog's second attack, Lassonde up the Soul Rock, kill it with Avalog's second attack, and he never has to attack into a Bergmite throughout the... Uh, excuse me, a, well, a Bergmite or an Avalog through the entire game. 
although that's obviously asking a lot to draw the two Lissandras, not Lysanders, at the exact right times. But still, it's an option there. It's another win condition. It's it's something he can do to avoid the Avalug on Avalug battle. Now, Luke's deck is not running as nicely as we'd like here. He's got the second attack and the second Bergmite, but he doesn't have an Avalug. It does, however, look very much like um, that Soul Rock's going to go down. Luke's going to go one prize up. And there's still no Bergmite, let alone with an energy on Joe's side of the board. And he's essentially playing Solrot Lunatone against Avalug. Now go back to my round four game where I played Solrot Lunatone against Luke's Avalug. And just go and see how quickly that lasted for me. I believe the game lasted all of a whopping five minutes. Joe's not going to win the way he's going here. He had a very good first game and he used Avalug's second attack to wonderful effect. I questioned it and then realised actually that was very much the right thing to do. In the second game, the simplicity of Luke's deck won out as he decked out Joe. And now we're in the third game. And there's another Pokemon Centre Lady here. This is a frustrating thing about playing against an Avalug healing deck. There's another Pokemon Centre Lady there. But he appears to again not have the Avalug. He does get to do a discard. Oh, and it's the Pokemon Center Lady, which would have been a wonderful card for Joe to draw into there. He could have got rid of all five of those damage counters and the poison on the active Soul Rock. But he can't because it was just knocked off with Bergmite's attack. Now he gets an energy on the second Soul Rock, but there's still no Bergmite there. He needs a Bergmite with the energy. He needs to go into Avalug. He has actually lucked out massively so far. And the um, Hard Charm there and the Muscle Band basically cancel each other out to lead to 40 damage. He has lucked out massively that Luke has been unable to draw into the um, Avalug and the requisite energy. Because if he had Avalug, it, it just wouldn't even be an issue here. There's the DCE. And I believe here he's actually going to consider using Bergmite's attack somehow. Um, and he does use Bergmite's attack. Now for those of you that have forgotten what it does, it's tackle for a DCE and a water energy. It does 30 damage. That KOs the Soul Rock, I believe, through the poison. And because this uh, Soul Rock incoming active doesn't have a muscle band on it, it's only doing 20 damage, which puts Bergmite up to 60. So that's a problem. Now, something I should have mentioned, uh, at 29 minutes in, Trainer Lock came in. So at the moment, both parties are Trainer Locked. So Trainer item cards are not available, so there actually cannot be a muscle band. And trainers actually came back just then at 32 minutes. So it was a whopping two-minute trainer lock. It didn't really make a huge difference. But I'm going to point it out because it was something that happened. Now we finally see the Evo Soda into the Avalug. When the Bergmite isn't died, now we've got an Avalug with four energy on. And this is basically game at this stage. Because... Luke can just go for the second attack, and there really is nothing that can happen here. He can KO the Soul Rock there with a second attack that does 90. He can then KO the Lunatone, and there's not really anything that Joe can do at this stage. I mean, this is now an inevitability. The Lunatone takes two energy to do 20 damage, so there really is nothing that's going to be happening here. Um... Now, I believe what happened there was a switch. Switch happened. Which is very, very frustrating. And at the same time, a f I believe Frozen City was put into play. So we are now playing as if there is Frozen City on the field. Which I believe means that putting that energy on there is going to necessitate a couple of damage counters. That's why Luke's thinking so hard about doing so. So both parties had to use a switch there. Very annoying because Luke had the game there and then. Now, not seen or heard on the camera was Luke's frustration at that rule. The rules have been coming thick and fast. We've had the Sleep and Poison, Trainer Lock, Frozen City and Twitch just in this one game. Um, as well as all the others throughout the tournament. And essentially Luke was sitting there going, I'm going to win, I'm going to win, I'm going to win. KO's the Soul Rock. He's got nothing but a Lunatone with no energy on. He guarantees the win next turn. There is nothing Joe can do about it. And then the switch comes into play. 
which is really frustrating, which is the only reason this game is still going on. What this means now is that even if he um, kills that Soul Rock, uh, sorry, that Lunatone, maybe attaches another energy and retreats the Bergmite, even if he ki kills that Soul Rock, Joe could have an Avalug with free energy on coming and doing 40 damage and reducing it by 20 the following turn, or even 60 damage if he gets a muscle band out, which is really quite frustrating. Now, I believe there should be 20 damage on that benched Bergmite. I'm not entirely sure why there isn't. Yes, and Luke has meant just seen that as well. Um, I think that actually might have been something I pointed out on the day. It, with all of these weird rules coming in, it's very easy to miss them, so please don't think anything negative about the players missing these rules. It's very easily done. And he's trying to evolve up to Bergmite, uh, up to Avalug, but I don't believe he can evolve up to Avalug because it's only just gone down that turn, unless I've missed something. I could be wrong about that. Feel free to mention this in the comments, please, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm sure he just benched that Bergmite, attached a DCE, and then put it straight up to Avalug. So I think... And Joe does need to be careful... Oh no, in, in that... No, there must have... Sorry, I must have missed Luke. Luke must have had a very quick turn. My apologies there. Luke must have had a very quick turn because he just attached another energy. But here's the problem with the Frozen City out here. That Avalug is now on 40 damage without anything actually happening. So it's, um... It's not going terribly well. Joe is very much on the back burner here. And the Pokemon Center Lady happens. And... I mean, essentially, what would be really good here is if he could just retreat the Bergmite and just get two quick KOs with Avalug. But no, he's just going to discard with Bergmite. Oh, and he's going for the deck out because we're in the same situation we were in the previous game. Joe has run himself out of energy. He's attaching to the benched Avalug, which is never going to attack. As Luke just sits there and uses Berg's might attack to discard all of his energy, and he is going to win the Professor Cup. We can see it happening now. He didn't retreat the Lunatone, and again, the reason, and if uh, we're 40 minutes in, it's a long video, but hopefully you understand why, and hopefully it's been enjoyable. This, and that's how I missed um, Luke's turn a minute ago, because he's been taking his turn so quickly. This makes perfect sense, he's just decking him out. Joe has got too much going on in his deck, he's not being careful enough about his... Um, uh, his energy attachments, and that red card is actually going to force him to draw more cards. He's then going to knock off with Bergmite, and Joe has no cards draw at the beginning of his game. Congratulations to Luke winning the Professor Cup Rules Tournament in Sutton Coldfield. Make sure you like and subscribe, and all of that good stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you again soon.